Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition has already been around the block quite a while, as it released a few years ago for the PC. I played it back then and spent way too many nights micromanaging my civilization to victory until the wee hours of the morning. And now, here in 2023, with the real-time strategy game making the shift to Microsoft's home consoles, I'm at it again. And it's good. So bloody good. Most who play Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition on Xbox will most likely already know what the game is all about. It is, after all, aimed at being a trip down memory lane, an opportunity to replace those rose-tinted glasses and present a fresh update to a classic game. No false memories required. For those who stumble upon Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition while looking for their next Xbox Game Pass adventure, it's a simple strategy game where players start with a small town centre, a few citizens, and not much else. The goal is to gather resources and expand your tiny town into a thriving community of citizens working for the greater good, with that greater good being your army, which you will need to use to conquer the world, or at least the sliver of it presented on each map. Consider it a mix of city builder and war simulator, without the complications. It's bare bones in some respects, but still deep enough that you can spend four hours on a single skirmish map against AI opponents. The game is broken down into a few different modes, and it's here where my embarrassment will show. By that, I mean that in the 20 or so years that I've played Age of Empires, I've never bothered with the campaign mode. In fact, in any city builder, I always leave the campaign well alone and get stuck into the sandbox. Whether it be the brilliant Frostpunk, Rollercoaster Tycoon, Tropico 6, whatever, I don't bother with the campaign. And the same is true with Age of Empires, no matter which numbered entry I play. My reasoning is that the idea of building up a civilization, or in some cases a theme park, only to have it rendered useless once a few arbitrary goals have been completed seems like a waste of my time. And honestly, can a real-time strategy game really deliver a narrative worthy of my time? Well, this is subjective, of course, and there will be those who play solely to take on the historical battles, but for me, it's not enough. Though, for the sake of this review, I did dip into a couple of the campaign missions and had a good look at what was on offer. Still, it didn't manage to take me away from the skirmish game mode, where I spent most of my time. There are, of course, some other game modes, such as co-op missions and the typical multiplayer suite. However, as I played the pre-release version of the game, I was not able to test the multiplayer experience. This wasn't a big deal for me, as I've never really been interested in the multiplayer component of Age of Empires, though once the game does go live for everybody, I'll probably dip in and see what it's all about. Though, I promise you, if I lose my first match, you can bet your resources that I'll never touch it again. The sour puss that I am. What I can say from my many hours spent in the skirmish mode against the feisty AI is that it's the full fat experience made friendly for console users. It's the same game that launched on PC, but with console controls for gamepad players. The user interface has been completely reworked to accommodate the living room setup. Radial menus galore, and intuitive enough that if you skip the tutorial, I did because I'm impatient, you'll still figure it out within a short while. It works, and it works really well, to the point that I actually ended up preferring to play with a gamepad rather than lugging my mouse and keyboard over from my desk. If you really can't stand the idea of playing with a controller in hand, you can use a mouse and keyboard by plugging in a wireless dongle into your console and changing the options in the main menu. Annoyingly though, you can't change the control input mid-game, so once you start, you're stuck with whatever control input you've selected, at least until you can get back to the main menu and change it. I did play a little while with the keyboard and mouse setup, and rather cleverly, the game changes its user face to the more familiar PC version, which I thought was a nice touch. It makes for a seamless transition for veterans who want to spend hours building armies and collecting resources without having to hunch over a PC desk. Because, let's face it, most of us who play Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition are old geezers with back problems, and we really do appreciate the ergonomics of slouching on a couch. Another carryover from the PC version, and this took me by surprise, was the inclusion of graphics options, where you're able to tweak the visuals to your preference. There are the usual PC presets, ranging from Ultra all the way down to Low. Being the graphics whore that I am, I opted for Ultra, and the game gave me a warning that there may be some issues in the late game with these graphical settings. However, after a dozen or so skirmish games, I never noticed any slowdown, glitches, or otherwise. 
It ran perfectly fine, though there were the occasional two second pauses where the autosave kicked in. But there was nothing to take me away from my empire conquering ways. I am British after all, it's in my blood. After a dozen or so hours in Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, I can safely say this is not a watered down port to give Microsoft an easy first party Xbox Game Pass release. It's the real deal and as feature complete as the PC edition, which is quite the accomplishment. A myriad of quality of life improvements makes the original game, which is still a classic, very much redundant. The only reason to keep hold of the original is to preserve those big boxes that PC games used to ship in. We're in a new age now, and Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition is the perfect example of taking an ancient game and giving it just enough love to make it feel almost new, something that many other remasters and re-releases so often miss the mark on. And that is the end of this review. Thank you very much for watching, as always, it is very much appreciated. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, do us a solid. Go on down below, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and if you haven't already, ding the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we've got new stuff for you to watch. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, cheers my dears.